today to do good works. Let's remember that Christ first did the good works. Let's sing. Following Jesus is my great adventure. Following Jesus means I'll put him first. He is the light guiding me through the darkness. Following Jesus, the Oh 
declare it, friends. He's my hero. He's the greatest of all. He's our hero. He's my hero. It's why I sing. Sing it out one more time. He's our. Can you believe we are already at the end of summer? But can you also believe we are already at the end of our LOL sermon series? It sure does feel like we haven't done a pop quiz in a while. Pop quiz! Are you ready? Here is question number one. What book of the Bible have we been studying from? A. Matthew B. Acts C. Corinthians if you said B, you are absolutely right. Question number two. In our LOL sermon series, we have been looking into the life of which brother? A, Moses. B, Abraham. C, Paul. If you said C, you are once again amazingly right. Last question. L-O-L stands for living out loud. What do you think that we want to live out loud? I say we want to live our blank out loud. This one is not a multiple choice. You get three seconds. Shout out your answer in three, two, one. We want to live our faith out loud. Did you get a three out of three? A two out of three? A one out of three? Nonetheless, shall we do a quick celebration dance? Congratulations. Good job. Today is our last Sunday in our Living Out Loud sermon series. This, my friends, does not mean we stop living our faith out loud, but rather the opposite. Since we have spent the last five to six weeks learning from God's word and the life of Paul, how to live out loud. We should be challenged to shine God's light wherever and everywhere we go. Amen? Amen. We 
today, technically, are supposed to look into Paul's third missionary journey from Acts chapter 18 and 20. But I actually want to take today to kind of wrap things up. Is that cool? Cool? Before I keep talking, let's quickly watch a video reviewing the life of our brother Paul. And some of the events are coming up in the next coming weeks, so stay tuned. God's story, Paul. So part of God's story is about a man named Paul, and it begins like this. Paul was born in a city called Tarsus. Back then, being born in Tarsus was about as cool as being born in an amusement park. So Paul thought he was cooler than other people, especially the ones who were following Jesus. Paul turned into a real bully. He found ways to get people who were following Jesus thrown in jail, beat up, and even killed. One day, Jesus yelled from the sky, Paul, Paul, why are you acting this way? Then Jesus shined a really bright light, brighter than the sun, right into Paul's eyes. Paul couldn't see anything for three days. Kids, never look straight at the sun. Remember what happened to Paul. After Paul could see again, he decided to listen to God. And not just listen. Paul decided to spend his whole life telling people about God and God's son Jesus. Paul knew if he was going to tell people about God, he better get to know God. Paul found different ways to get to know God. Sometimes he fasted, which is when you skip a meal or many meals, and spend time praying to God instead. Other times, he snuck off alone so he could sit and listen to God. Paul said getting to know God was like training to run a big race. Sometimes training for a race takes work, especially if you want to win, just like it can sometimes take hard work to fast or sit quietly and listen to God. But for Paul, knowing God was way better than winning first place, even if the prize is a million billion dollars. Once Paul knew God, he was so excited that he wanted to tell everyone, even people he didn't know. Paul became a missionary. A missionary is a person who goes to new places and tells people about Jesus. And even while he was doing this, Paul was writing lots and lots of letters telling other people about Jesus. Now sometimes, Paul found out that not everybody wanted to hear about God. But he told them about God anyway, just to make sure everybody had a chance to hear. Have you ever tried talking to somebody when they weren't listening to you? The people started getting really mad at Paul when he talked. They threw rocks at him, beat him up, put him in jail, and even tried to get rid of him completely. Guess what Paul did? He said he'd be happy to go to jail, get beat up, and even die if it means more people know about Jesus. Well, God was with Paul when he was getting beat up and put in jail. One night, God even sent an earthquake to open the doors of the jail so Paul could be free. But instead of escaping, Paul stayed to tell the prison guard about Jesus. Later on, Paul was sent to a bigger city with a bigger jail. To get there, he had to take a boat. During hurricane season, one of the storms hit Paul's boat and it got shipwrecked. Sorry. So he had to swim all the way to a nearby island. Picture swimming in the North Pole with penguins. That's how cold Paul was. But as soon as he saw there were people living on the island, what do you think he did? Yep, he taught them about Jesus. Paul never stopped telling people about Jesus and how Jesus loves everyone and wants to help them stop doing wrong things and teach them how to know him. He got put in jail at least four times, was shipwrecked three times, and was even bitten by a poisonous snake. But Paul didn't care what happened. He was so happy knowing God that he just wanted everybody else to know God too. And that's the story of Paul. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Paul was a bully who didn't follow God. God blinded him for three days. Then Paul believed in God, and he spent time getting to know God. He decided to tell everyone about Jesus. He was willing to have rocks thrown at him, go to jail, get beat up, get shipwrecked, or even die as long as he could tell people about God. And that's a part of God's story. Man. Paul loved God and he didn't just love him, but he lived his faith out loud. He lived and shined the light of Jesus wherever he went. His life was a life of mission to share the good news of Jesus Christ, not with just people he liked, but with everyone. And from our previous Bible passages, we know that that was not easy. People made fun of him. They arrested him. They punished him. Man, they threw rocks at him. 
But none of these things stopped Paul from sharing God's love. You see, we met Paul when he persecuted believers. He was called Saul back then. We traveled with him on the road to Damascus where Jesus, our Lord Jesus met with him. And that changed Paul's life forever. He became a follower of Christ. As we have read about his life from the pages of this Bible, we have an excellent, amazing example of a trustworthy follower of Christ. And today in Acts chapter 20, which I'm going to focus more on, Paul is saying his final goodbye to the elders. He spent three hard, challenging, but rewarding and wonderful years with them. But now he's heading to Jerusalem where things don't look so good for him. Paul told the Ephesians elders that the Holy Spirit was leading him back to Jerusalem and he was going even though, even though our next sermon series is even if, but even though he didn't know what was going to happen to him there, he only knew that in every city, the Holy Spirit warned him that he would face prison and hardship. Paul told them that they would never see his face again. And knowing this, Paul knew that he would not see these believers again. So he gave them special instructions to take care of the followers of Christ that these elders would be responsible for. Paul said that teachers would come to Ephesus and try to lead people away from God's truth. Oh no! But friends, I want you to understand that Paul's final words were about how Paul, he lived a life to set an example, to work hard, to earn money and to help the weak because Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And my friends, this is our God. A couple weeks ago, we said goodbye to our praise leader, Miss Hannah. God has a special plan for her life as well. So she is off to Chicago to study for two years. But Sunlight and myself loves Miss Hannah so much. And it was really, really hard to say, see you later. But we know that this too is God plan. So on our last Sunday in sunlight, if you remember, for some of you, we stretched out our arms and we prayed for her. And similar to this, as Paul, it was time to say farewell to these believers from Ephesus. They all came together, knelt down to pray. And after praying, the Ephesians elders hugged Paul and wept as they said, Goodbye. Their hearts were saddened because Paul said they would never see his face again. They loved this man who faithfully served them and earned their trust by the way he lived. Although it was a very sad day for these Ephesian elders, they could go home and know that if they lived a life as Paul modeled, they could live a life that is trustworthy and one that pleases Jesus. Friends, we have Jesus who lived a life that we can model after, who loves us so much. And I wanna ask us today, how about you? And if not, do you want to live a life like Paul, like Jesus, that is trustworthy and one that pleases God? I have not a single doubt in my heart that you won't. And I know that you will live a life that will be pleasing to God because your parents are praying for you and I am praying for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you sent your son Jesus to save us and the entire world. Help us to understand what it cost you so that we might have the hope of eternal life. May sunlight kids live their faith out loud so that their 
life may bear witness to our Lord Jesus and his love, mercy, and grace wherever we may be. We pray that we live a life that chooses to model after Christ, to love like Jesus, to serve like Jesus, and to love God like Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. for sticking around. We are so glad that you made it out to online Sunlight Kids Worship. A big announcement. Starting next week, August 15th, instead of having elementary Sunlight Kids and preschool Sunlight Kids, we are mashing the two up and having one online worship for our preschool and elementary friends. Myself and Pastor Grace will Share the word of God each week and you'll get the best out of a little bit of us. So make sure to join us online. And if you are well enough, we invite you to come in person. We have worship 940 and 1130. Well, we are finishing up our LOL, Living Out Loud Sermon Series. And I challenge you friends to live your faith out loud. Let the light of Jesus shine upon your face. May you be blessed, but may that blessing flow through you so that you can be a vessel that shares the love of Christ wherever you go. God uses Christians, followers of Christ to tell others about Jesus so that they may repent and be saved. So let us live our faith out loud. I will see you next week. Goodbye.